um, which is the migration paths to project operations. So we do have three different migration options right there. So um, first of all, we do have the in-place upgrade. We do have the data migration to a new project operations environment. And we also have the option to uninstall PSA and reinstall project ops um, there on top. So maybe let's start with the um, upper two, and then let's jump to the most in, uh, interesting one. So um, first of all, let's start from the bottom in this case. So uninstall PSA and reinstall project operations. So um, this is mainly um, used uh, in cases when you may didn't have enough or that much productive data there. So the problem is there um, when when we in, uninstall PSA, um, we will also remove the projects. And um, when you reinstall in the project ops, um, you may have to um, export and import your data a bit. So with the removing of a solution, um, the um, the entities will also the tables will also be removed, and um, it will then also remove the data, of course. So be careful about that. Also, um, when you have a customized system or customized environment with like uh, custom plugins or workflows, cloud flows, whatever, um, it always gets a bit difficult to uninstall PSA a bit um, later. So especially when you're already running a productive system since years, then um, it's kind of difficult. Um, so we not really recommending the last point there, so to uninstall it. So it's a it's maybe something when you just have installed PSA and you, you're not, not, not live at the moment, and then you want to make check out what is happening there. And then you're free to do it, or you have like an, an environment you can just throw away, then you can as well like set it up and uh, directly from the scratch with perturbations. Then the data migration, which is getting more interesting, because here we are basically um, setting up a um, mirrored environment of our uh, productive environment just with project operations. So in, instead of um, installing PSA, we are installing project operations in that environment and then like adding customizations on top and um, setting up everything in parallel that we basically would have our, uh, two environments at, at some point. And um, what is then happening is that we are migrating the data with, with some tools from the PSA environment to the project ops environment. In that case, we need to do some adjustments because there are some changes on the schema names and on some entities um, that uh, need to allow some changes. Um, there are as well some um, new features on the project ops side um, we can consider in that case. So for example, for existing data, um, it can be considered to un enable a flag or something, which was not there before. Um, but basically what we're doing is we are moving one data to, uh, from, one, from system A to system B. And um, this is not happening like in one click and then transfers all the data and it's all done. So <laughs> it depends a bit on the data, on the size of, of the environment, and then um, uh, multiple migrations will happen, and then you're always doing some data, delta migrations, so only changes since the last migration, and so on. So to a point, we finally then really have to uh, in parallel environments. So then, where we like all the data is the same, um, just only one environment we do have project operations, on the other one we have PSA, and then with the go live, um, the um, environments basically switch places and the the user then accessing the project operations environment on the next day. So that's a very reasonable um, process there. Um, we are already doing this with uh, some of our customers. So um, yeah, stay tuned for that. Um, and I think so for the next for the next year, this is definitely a way to to upgrade the environment if if you want to. Um, and then come to the first point of the list. Um, the in-place upgrade, which I put in, in brackets for be available next year. Um, it basically starts uh, next year in the very beginning of Q Q1. For, uh, Microsoft will like upgrade um, existing environments from PSA to project versions. And this basically happens on, on a certain priority list. So 
Um, first priority would be the environments they they don't use any WPS or scheduling functionality on the project tasks. Um, that has the reason that in the uh, project operations, basically everything around the scheduling of the tasks is changing, and there are like more limitations, and it um, brings up the new features incorrectly if you do have if you just like move them. Um, it's not possible at the moment, and therefore they will first um, upgrading the in place on that. And then over the time, um, this will be more enabled next year till the, I think, end of next year, where we then have like the, the normal migration in or the normal in place upgrade, hopefully. So um, that's the plan on that. Um, so for, for the time frame of that, of the in place upgrade, as mentioned, it's starting Q1. Uh, next year, or it's already, I think, already started with uh, some um, smaller out of the box environments where, like, um, there are options to, to like, left those WBS structures and project task structures out. So maybe even like environments without any project data. Um, and then this will be um, extended basically. Which e phase? There are like three or four phases um, planned by Microsoft, and um, will all happen during the next year. Um, it will then also um, migrate all the rest of the environments soonish.